All right, bittersweet as we are wrapping up, wrapping up uh, Valdez operation till till winter skiing time comes. And last minute stops. Last minute stops in town. And then truck and trailer, family and dogs are headed to Southern Oregon. Every single time I hear the word prospector, I think it's a jellyfish. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. All right, so much of today is getting ready for final pack up. We've got kayaks to get up top of the enclosed trailer, uh, cardboard and small wood stuff to burn to make sure that we just get rid of that, not leaving that around. We've got all kinds of final little bits, pieces, and that's today. Bits, pieces, final tying down, getting, well, not final, finalizing uh, some of the odds and ends, and then we'll be ready for tying down, getting things set. Okay, um, we are less than 48 hours. We have what? Sheesh, it's like 36 hours, right? Yeah. 36 hours till move time. I forget the mileage, 2,000 miles, more than 2,000 miles from Alaska to Southern Oregon after more than 10 years. And we're feeling, I don't know about you, I'm feeling the stress. Um, yeah. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. Um, not everything is working perfectly. Uh, you know, it's just, you do what you do. We've got, we were gonna take three vehicles down, Liam's rig. Uh, is unfortunately not ready from the shop. Truck is drivable. We don't think it, it can make the drive reliably. I bet it can, I bet it can make the drive. <laughs> okay, the goat but, can make the drive, but, but the prudent mind, yes. prudent minds have prevailed. You know, and it was nice because Liam and I just straight away, I think, as we both heard the news, was, you know, the, the expeditionary mindset mindset kicked in and you know the journey is more important than any one of the pieces and it was pretty clear right away that okay the truck's nixed from the plan we got an extra we got a co-driver now um, with Liam back in the mix and so Liam and Greta can spell each other off so our, our drive just I think became a lot safer but uh, that was not a piece of the puzzle we thought we'd have to be dealing with. Where His truck wasn't ready. He's been kind of pestering folks for three months, but small town anyway good lesson for him you got to keep on it can't expect things uh, you gotta be persistent 
stress is definitely hitting us and we're 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 trying to you know we're managing that it, it's really kind of coming to coming to terms that this is a move after 10 more than 10 years and you know 17 to 19 years of of us being in Alaska and so it's not as simple as just pack our things and go I mean functionally yes but uh, you know I'll admit there's a bit of a, a bit of emotion and uh, yeah a bit of emotion uh, too to the move and to slowing the, this last little bit where we need to have haste but but think through things as well there's, there's enough pieces to still uh, really gum us up and we still have to factor in the Canadian border crossing Hi, what's up, Lucy? Strap and bike on. Yeah, last steps, all the awkward stuff. How, how do you do that? Just loop her through. Yep. Uh, over the top. Or, yeah, there you go. Ah. Lucy's bike, Lucy's strapping her down. Dad's gonna double check, but. Filled to the brim. I think we're gonna make it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So definitely feeling a little stressed on final bits. We have not much room to go. And <sighs> not much room to go. And not much room uh, in the brains. In the round two, dog packing dogs. Dogs are finishing a little meal. A fresh fish. Not fresh, you know. Dog order into into who is most compatible near each other, just to enjoy the trip more. Laurel is loaded, trailer and, bourbon and trailer is loaded. Uh, Yukon Red is ready to be dog loaded and people loaded, and the trailer is set to jet. We're talking who's grabbing what dogs to put them in the boxes. House is clear. So, solo. Has, has Lena. Lena. Comet. Comet. No, no Dasher. Dasher. So, S, T, D. Great, great. We got STDs on this side. <laughs> and then on your side, we're going to have Alana, um, Comet. 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 And then so sit and, and, and grab it. And then grab it on the end. Yeah. Great. Okay. What's the, uh, what, what are the letters over there? Uh, Does it make a word? A. I don't think so. A. 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 C. D. G. Uh, oh well. Fueled up, leaving the hub. Headed to Chisto to get some air for trailer tires. Got air on the tires, leaving posties here in Chistochina. I had to go to get a chance to chat, chat with Evelyn Beater. And finally, we're out of here.
and we are officially in no man's land, the spot between the Canadian Customs and U.S. Customs uh, border checks, technically in Canada, uh, but there's a good, I forget, 20k, 20 miles um, between the two Customs uh, stations. Waiting. They're doing an inspection on a sprinter just up in front of us. Uh, it's a little line forming, forming behind us, which is probably good. A little bit of pressure, as long as we're not the ones putting the pressure on. Okay, uh, we're stopped to provide documentation, uh, firmly establishing that we have business. Not just that we're moving, but we do have business uh, back in the states. Um, something predating, um, you know, something very recent, so that we're not just trying to go through for a leisurely drive drive uh, and not be able to stop. Head south on Yukon 1 East. <laughs> Thanks, Google lady. Um, so we, we do have that documentation. I uh, wasn't prepared to show that level of, of um, proof, but got it and anticipating uh, finishing this very soon. We just popped over here. They let us take the dogs out, so that was great. Um, good folks, you know, doing their, doing their job. Um, it's an ugly time and puts us in weird weird positions. Okay, we've been approved. Uh, we're just gassing up here at Beaver Creek. If there was ever a sanitary operation there that actually was attempting to address a pathogen, that was pretty darn clean. I should have filmed that process. That looked like taking it seriously. Part of the part of the rules in Canada, we've got um, America to, uh, are are confined to their vehicles. Uh, that means you can't set up a tent and put out a sleeping bag or a, pad, a sleeping pad. You've got to stay in your in your vehicle. Uh, so here we are. 7 a.m. We're getting um, getting started for the next next section. Pulling out here, heading to Whitehorse, heading to the vineyard. Give a nod to Whitehorse, my favorite northern city, as we 
pass right by. All right, officially through Whitehorse. No checkpoints for us. Feels a little odd, but we're continuing on the approved travel corridor. Okay, part of the journey. Um, we had a door get locked accidentally. So, after a bunch of trying, all the things, eventually the decision was made we had to break the back glass. Uh, to, to make issues more interesting, the only person who was still in the vehicle was Laurel. And all of our trying to MacGyver, get her to MacGyver her way out of her car seat all right, and to unlock the, the, system. the system let us in. Apparently car seats work really well. We thought she could probably wriggle out, but that's only when she didn't actually need to. Um, she never actually has, but um, apparently she can't. So try to keep that positive, keep things upbeat. Uh, from her knowing that we're all out here kind of biting our nails and I think she mostly thought it was a game and then it was a game that went on a little bit longer than maybe she would have wanted but still positive so now we're, we're going to start sweeping up um, get all of our cleanup going we've got tarp we got duct tape we're prepared for this kind of thing um look careful 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 Babies, baby bison. Baby bison, baby bison. They're so cute. They're youngins too. Oh, look at those youngins. Okay, Greta and Liam heading back to Toad River. We've got flat tire. He's got that jacked up. And we have a, we pop loose here. I'll show you a little better. This bracket here should be, um, this should be making contact up here. So it is, it's popped loose. Which has caused some nastiness on the on the tire. So got it jacked up, changing the tire. Worst case, they don't have a welder that can travel. We're just a few miles, just a few miles, like less than 10 miles from Toad River. Uh, slept here, did dogs. Um, at 3:30, when Greta and I were doing dogs, we discovered discovered the the flat um, and the popped weld. So. Uh, gonna get that fixed. If we can't fix the popped weld, we'll put the tire back on, or the new tire on. We'll drive to Fort Nelson, try to get it fixed there. Interesting, trying to get help in, in a time of mandated quarantine for Americans. Nobody's stopping. What are we doing here? Well, putting the new tire, spare on. Each trailer tire has a spare, and then I have spare um, tires as well, in case, <laughs> just in case. But those will have to get put on at a shop, which I think is in our future. As we've got that popped weld there, it is possible to move down the road. With that popped, if I spin it and put the bracket into that space, that's not what we want. That's a worst case. Sometimes 
the worst case happens. And then you should check out the, the this tire. This is the tire that was on. Oops. Got a hole right here in it. And as you can see, there are no, there's no grid on it. Okay, I'm gonna just lower the jack just a little bit to get rest on the tire. A little pressure. Let's see how we're doing over here. The... Okay, we're still up in the air. It's good, I just wanna tighten up. Just wanna tighten up the lug nuts. And then we'll wait. Hopefully we can get uh, somebody from Toad River to come out with a welder. We'll weld that seam back together and we'll be golden, we'll be on the road. <laughs> so, that's the hope, that is the hope. Well, done what I can do for now. Enjoy a little breakfast. Uh, interesting thing, right? Um, not willing to help each other um, due to fear of a virus, even if we know that the chances are really low of mo most people having it. <laughs> survivability of it being incredibly, incredibly um, strong. So that's one thing, you know, whatever, that's what you think about something. In truth though, people aren't willing to help, clearly, um, real reticent to help each other. Somebody stranded on the side of the road, family, kids, you know, you know dogs, kids. Um, I don't think we look too sketchy. Probably, you know, maybe, maybe I've, my perception is off there. But nobody's willing to stop. American plates in Canada, nobody's stopping. Um, so that's what that is. Um, but interesting, you know, the, the way this is, we, we, I guess if we were, um, if I was a single person, just popping into hotels that were food for our stay, my stay. Um, I guess it'd be fairly normal other than you can't do anything else. As it is, for the family and dogs, uh, we're compelled to sleep in the truck and keep moving, which means we're all sleeping where we're driving. Thankful to be able to move through, which we are. About the spirit of things, though, too, right? Not just, not just the why, but the spirit of it. That's that's kind of challenged. Well, it looks like Greta and uh, Liam are back. Order updates.